In the Afghan capital, Kabul, a few women have returned to private universities where they are required to be separated from male students. But Taliban leaders have closed all public schools, saying the measure is in place only until the government can ensure women are protected on transportation and on campus. Girls are going to primary school, and the Taliban have said it will not exclude women from higher education and public life, as they did when in power from 1996 to 2001. But Afghan women's rights activists, like Mahbuba Saraj, are skeptical. The first time when the Taliban came, they did not say that schools are going to be closed for girls. They didn't. Their excuses were exactly the same excuse as now. Wait, we will fix it for you. And the women of Afghanistan waited six years and it never got fixed. During a congressional hearing in September, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told lawmakers he would appoint a senior State Department official to oversee issues specifically relating to women in Afghanistan. But this has not happened yet. Democratic Congresswoman Mary Gay Scanlon welcomed Blinken's promise in an interview with VOA. And I think any any nation state that ignores the talents or tries to suppress the contributions of women um, is at risk, both internally and externally. But um, the U.S. and the Group of Seven Allies have, have agreed to coordinate the response to the Taliban. Um, the U.S. has blocked the Taliban's access to Afghanistan's reserves um, to ensure they live up to pledges to respect women's rights and international law. On Thursday, six Afghan women gathered in front of a secondary school in Kabul to call for girls to be allowed to return. Taliban guards snatched their banner, pushed them, and fired gunshots into the air to disperse them. They also hit a foreign journalist with a rifle and blocked him from filming. Scenes that advocates say fuel more questions about the future of women in Afghanistan. Cindy Sane, VOA News.